Meteorologist Erica Lopez. On this Sunday, we are solely focusing on Tropical Storm Ian's forecast and what it's going to uh, eventually come into portions of Cuba and Florida over the next several days. Our thinking meteorologist Matthew Capucci is with me early this morning. But before we get to all those forecast details, I want to remind you um, we have a very special interview lined up with the National Weather Service Director Ken Graham. Uh, this is a very exclusive interview with him, and we want these questions to come from you guys. So in the comment section, if you have any worry about tropical storms, any weather or climate questions, please ask them in the comment section. If you feel more comfortable asking them in our direct messages, make sure to put them on there as well. But let's start with what's going on on the MyRadar app. Um, the latest uh, hurricane track, this is from the 11 a.m. Uh, track shift here. We've been tracking this storm over the last several days. And what's interesting about this particular storm system, it is forecast to rapidly intensify over areas of the Caribbean, eventually possibly making landfall in Cuba as a hurricane of category four strength over this region. Now, what we're still a little bit uncertain about, looks like the track is getting a little bit more focused though, is on exactly where it will make landfall. And Matthew Capucci will be in here in just a couple of moments and talk about the implications of this. But I wanna go over this really quickly. As you can see, it'll come close to the Gulf of Mexico and then eventually make landfall um, as of right now in the Florida Peninsula. Now this could change. If you're tuning in, you know this forecast has changed over the past several days. So this is something I just want to reiterate, especially in terms of what's going on with the trajectory of Tropical Storm E, and it's definitely been keeping us on our toes over the last several days. But now I want to take it to our meteorologist, Matthew Capucci, and he's going to explain more in detail why this forecast has changed over the last several days and what it means for areas of Cuba and Florida. So we'll go to our meteorologist, Matthew Capucci. Hey, good morning and thank you so much, Erica. Yeah, definitely something we want to watch here with this storm. This was the storm last night as it was gathering steam. You can see all the, the red, the oranges, the purples, signs of very cold cloud tops, meaning convection is growing very high. Convection being shower and thunderstorm activity. It's getting taller, it's getting more vigorous, but you'll see you know, last night was a little bit haggard. There were a couple dry slots working in. A couple things to note with this. Number one, these tendril-like clouds radiating away from the center, we call that outflow or transverse banding. Essentially, there's air at the upper levels spreading away from the storm, okay? That's a sign that more air is going out of the storm at the top, which means more air can go in down bottom. It's kind of like the storm is breathing a little bit, which is a sign foreshadowing intensification. Number two, you're noticing now some clouds kind of streaming off and heading north. That's a sign that since the clouds can go north, there's less in the way of wind out of the northeast. Earlier on, we had northeasterly winds at the upper levels kind of suppressing the storm farther south. That's changing now. The winds aloft are weakening, making it easier for this thing to kind of consolidate, organize, and form. Now, it's still a little bit messy. This was the Hurricane Hunters pass through the storm last night, looking for a low level center. It's kind of like playing pin the tail on the donkey. You want to figure out where to pin the tail. Now, they had to figure out where to fix the location of the storm in weather models, and so essentially where to estimate the storm as being anchored. But here's the thing. They found one low-level circulation, two low-level circulations, a third one here, a fourth one here. So the question, which one's the real one and which ones are transient mesovortices or smaller areas of spin? We just don't know yet. As a result, we can't really fix the storm as being at any one location. Now here's the thing. Eventually, a core is going to form. We just don't know which one at this point, but this thing is moving over extremely warm. Sea surface temperatures in the upper 80s, nearing 90 degrees. So rapid intensification is likely. The other thing, winds in the upper atmosphere are spinning clockwise around the system. That's key for something called outflow. So again, we talked about that earlier. The more the storm exhales aloft, the more exhaust that fans away from the storm, the more of a vacuum effect you get aloft, and the more air comes in the bottom. Basically, hurricanes spin counterclockwise, so they spin kind of like this. All that air is funneled towards the middle, goes up the eye wall, and then spreads out clockwise. It kind of unwinds. That's why this clockwise flow will help that unwinding of the air at the upper levels. More air goes out, more comes in down the bottom. We call it venting. It's kind of like if you put a, a fan at the top of a chimney and blew air up and out of the chimney, more would go out, so more would come in. That would fuel the fire, fan the flames, it would grow taller. Same thing here, so the storm likely getting more intense. So we're expecting this to consolidate throughout the day today. Here's lunchtime, kind of getting going by evening. We start seeing sort of a more common center really beginning to take shape and uh, looking a little bit better on simulated radar. And eventually, overnight tonight to early tomorrow morning, it heads towards 
Western Cuba. The question, whether or not it actually hits Western Cuba or just shaves the area, really remains to be seen at this point. It will be a very close, a tenuous thing there. Weather models really showing it just barely nicking Western Cuba, but then kind of heading north into the Gulf of Mexico, where it'll still stay strong up to about here. Then it'll rapidly weaken farther north. The reason being, we have this dip in the jet stream trough. Now here's the American GFS model. This one says, hey, this trough, this dip within which is nestled cool air, low pressure and spin will not capture the storm, will not capture Ian as it rises to the Northern Gulf. Instead, this thing is trucking down dry air. It's trucking down wind shear, so pernicious disruptive winds with height. So this is saying, hey, not only is it not scooped east, but it's also gonna kind of run farther north stall a little bit, head towards the coastline, and weaken upon impact because of that shear, the disruptive winds, and of course the dry conditions. The European model, on the other hand, says, hey, stronger dip in the jet stream, and at the same time, that kind of scoop this storm farther north and east, potentially moving ashore over western Florida, and then impacting southeastern Georgia with gusty winds and heavy rainfall, perhaps a couple of isolated tornadoes as we head towards next weekend. So a lot of wild cards in this forecast. I do think the American GFS model is likely more favored to occur. And so you kind of see what goes on with this. This storm dragging down, this, this dip in the jet stream, dragging down dry air from Canada, which becomes entrained in the storm right here like this. That really weakens the storm markedly as it approaches landfall. The other thing too, you know, with all this wind energy aloft, it'll kind of play tug of war and shear apart the storm. So a number of reasons to think that there's a lesser chance of a higher end storm towards the Northern Gulf. So yeah, it'll be in the Gulf of Mexico. It'll be a buzzsaw over the Southern Gulf. By the time it gets to like the Florida Big Bend or Panhandle area, it'll be less severe. So still plan for impacts in Western Cuba. Over here, we're watching very closely, maybe a category one storm as it goes to make landfall. That's not as bad as a cat four, but still could be impactful. Gusty to locally damaging winds with the storm, the most damaging near the center, but storm surge, especially in this part of the Gulf of Mexico could be a big, a big issue with water moving ashore three to six feet in a few areas. That's enough to cause some problems. And of course, heavy rainfall and a couple of isolated tornadoes too. We'll be tracking this around the clock. We promise we're with you every step of the way. Thank you so much. Uh, our meteorologist Matthew Capucci here with us this morning. But before I let y'all go, I want to uh, show you a couple of reminders, especially if you're in the Florida area, even in the West Coast, in the peninsula. Here's a couple of uh, things I want to reiterate. So first of all, as you're preparing for the possibility of the storm to impact your area, I want you to determine your risk. Now, this is something you're going to have to really plan ahead for as the storm gets closer to your region. But what type of hazards are you expecting? Is it storm surge, strong winds, tornadoes, inland flooding and rip currents? Make sure that you identify what risks you are in um, as this storm approaches your region. Next thing I want you to do is develop an evacuation plan. Of course, it's always important to know um, and always seek out your officials, your local officials in your area, but find your evacuation zone. If you don't know what this is, I know a lot of you maybe are new to Florida like me. Um, this is something I had to look for as well, but find your evacuation zone, plan several routes, have supply go back. So make sure you know what to pack and we'll show you that in just a couple minutes. Plan for your pets and follow those evacuation routes. Of course, always seek your local authorities in your region. And the last thing I want to talk about is this emergency supply kit. So maybe a lot of you uh, planning ahead already this weekend, make sure to take a time. We're still days away from this storm to make impacts across areas of the United States. But this is something I want to show you all. Food and water is very important. Uh, medicine and prescriptions, fill those gas tanks. Even if it's up to half a tank, make sure you at least have enough gas to head to point A, from point A to point B. Uh, cash on hand, batteries, chargers, and radios. All of this will help you navigate the storm heading into the next several days. And of course, our team here at My Radar, we're gonna have continuous team coverage throughout the rest of your day today and into the week until landfall. So make sure you're following us all across the social media platforms, and I'll see you back here this later today and even heading into your Monday. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.